Hey, I'm Bethany with Photographer Overnight, and today I'm going to show you how to get some awesome silhouettes with your camera. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you haven't already is switch your camera to manual mode, which is usually indicated with this M on your camera dial. This is going to allow you to have full control over the settings on your camera to get this specific look. If you've ever tried to capture a silhouette in one of your camera's automatic modes, you might have noticed it doesn't work very well. The reason for that is because your camera is calculating how much light you have in your frame and trying to give you a happy medium. So it wants to dull your bright sky and brighten up your subjects at the same time, which is going to give you a picture that looks something like this. And if your camera has an automatic flash, you're also going to have the flash firing in automatic modes, which is not helpful. So since we don't want a mediocre picture that looks like we took it with our cell phone, we're going to take control of our picture and switch to manual. P.S. Here's a shameless plug. We sell a DVD that shows you how to take your camera off auto to get better looking pictures in less than an hour. Totally worth the 20 bucks. So let's get back to our silhouette picture here and talk about the settings that we use to capture it. The first thing I did was lower my ISO to 100. Normally you'd use ISO 100 on a super sunny day because you don't need the extra light and it's always best to keep your ISO as low as you possibly can in any given situation because higher ISOs create more grain in your image. And since my goal here is to actually get my picture as dark as I can, I can get away with the lowest ISO. The next setting I changed was my shutter speed to 1 320th of a second, which is quick enough to avoid any blur that could be caused by camera shake. And my f-stop here is at f5, which gives me enough depth of field to see the edge details of my bride and her horse. But generally, these settings end up being whatever gives me a perfectly black subject without making my sky too dark. So once we've taken the picture we want and we get it home on the computer, it usually could use a little help to make it pop. You might be surprised to see this is the original image I took with my camera. You can see it's not a perfect silhouette because there's still a bit of detail in the bride's dress, but I didn't want to lose any more color in my sky by making it too dark. So this is the perfect example of why you should always be shooting in RAW. If you're not sure what a RAW file is or how you would switch your camera to RAW, check out our video about that here. The changes you can make to your RAW files without losing any image quality are incredible when you compare it to a regular JPEG straight out of camera. So you can use any RAW editing program on your image. Lightroom is a popular program. Adobe Camera Raw is one that's free to download if you already own Photoshop. So in my RAW editing program, I usually do a couple things to make my picture pop. First of all, I want to make this a perfect silhouette by darkening up my blacks with this slider here. Then I want to bring out the colors of the sky a little more by increasing the vibrance, which enhances my blues and greens, and the saturation, which brings out my reds and yellows. Now you can see this image has a sort of green cast to it, and that has to do with the white balance. In our DVD, we talk about getting a custom white balance on camera, but as the sun is setting, your lighting changes so rapidly, and it's easy to just warm the picture up a bit with these sliders here. So play around with your colors and see what you like best. Since my picture is a little too green, I'm pulling this one over to add a little more red. So you can see how much more dramatic you can make your images when you're shooting in RAW. And once I have my silhouette looking how I want it, I'll click Save Image to save it as a JPEG, which is the standard file format for printing or uploading it anywhere online. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And here's where I would blab on about why you should subscribe to our awesome channel, but you don't have time for that. So, on to more tutorials that will help you improve your photography. Thanks for watching.